Segregation now, segregation tomorrow. Jews will not replace us. Jews will not replace us. Take power. I plan to hold the fiery cross. A clan bomb ripped apart Birmingham. The only way that we're going to survive as a people. I have never felt such evilness and such hatred. Martin Luther King was shot and was killed tonight in Memphis. We have inherited a big house, a great world house, in which we have to live together. Black men and white men, Easterners and Westerners, Gentiles and Jews, Catholics and Protestants, Muslims and Hindus, a family unduly separated in ideas, culture, and interests, who, because we can never again live without each other, must learn somehow in this one big world house to live with each other. Ada Lois Sipiel was born on February 8, 1924, in Chickasha, Oklahoma, during a period when racial violence and terror were common occurrences in the American South. She came of age when great minds like Charles Hamilton Houston and his protege Thurgood Marshall began a systemic attack upon the legal premises upon which segregation rested. For African Americans, we, we had we look for our, our protection to come from the Constitution because in Oklahoma, we saw the stage that was set for with the Senate Bill Number One, the very first bill passed, which was a bill that started turning Oklahoma into a very segregated state. And by the time it was over, with there were more more laws on segregation in Oklahoma than any other state in the South. After graduating with honors from Langston University. Ada applied to the all-white law school at the University of Oklahoma on January 14, 1946. Her application was denied because of her race. On April 16, 1946, with the support of civic leaders from across the state, Ada filed a lawsuit in Cleveland County District Court, prompting a legal battle that ended with the United States Supreme Court ruling in her favor and allowing her admittance to OU Law School in 1949. My mother would be talking often. She would say that the victory was not a victory for A. Lois Fisher. It was a victory for the U.S. Constitution, the 14th Amendment. While this legal triumph left an indelible impact on her, Ada's personal challenges were not over. As a student, she was forced to sit in the back of the classroom in seats marked colored. Nearly a century later, Oklahoma still struggles with failures of social justice that affect all of her citizens, battling high incarceration rates, high teenage pregnancy rates, high suicide rates, and high rates of poverty. Oklahoma is one of the highest ranked states in the nation for inequality in terms of race, gender, and economic opportunity. At the University of Science and Arts of Oklahoma, we acknowledge that there is work that still needs to be done. Issues of race and ethnic diversity still persist today as sites of contention that divide our citizens, our state, and our nation. Here, the, the curricular structure is, is designed to require involvement in these, this broader range of studies which do deal with these issues and so it's a matter of the required curriculum from freshman through senior years. Building on the powerful legacy of Ada Lois Sipiel Fisher and the courage she had to stand up against social injustice, the University of Science and Arts of Oklahoma seeks to heal the wounds festering in our society through the creation of the Ada Lois Sipiel Fisher Center for Social Justice and Racial Healing. The question of equality of opportunity and to a, a reasonable process for social mobility, you're going to have to have a unified effort to ensure for those things. There may be a severity in our not being able to achieve these things and maybe the center can help us address. The people united will never be defeated. 
The center's mission is to advance the common good by educating and inspiring individuals dedicated to the pursuit of social justice and racial healing through a wide variety of academic offerings and community partnerships. America is at a, is at a crossroads right now. What I hope to see happen is that we're giving young people an opportunity to learn how to use this democracy, how to create change in, in a democracy. Most of the time we see it when, by the time people are frustrated and, and in the streets protesting and throwing bottles, and, but there are many other ways that you can impact a, a democracy, is to give the students a chance to learn more about how to create change. to leave them some perception of the way that family, community, faith, and conviction can come together to make history, even in the case of a skinny little girl born on the wrong side of the tracks in a little town like Chickasha, Oklahoma.